There is a huge mistake when you're counting carbs on keto because it's not all about carbs. Sometimes people think that um, it's all about just bringing your carbs down below 50 grams and you're good to go. Other people think you have to go really, really super high on the fat to be keto. But today I'm going to get into something really, really important that will make your keto plan work a lot better. So the question is, why do you reduce your carbs below 50 grams? Because carbs increase insulin. And it's really the insulin that blocks ketosis. So we're trying to generate ketones, right? And so the more the insulin goes up, the less we're going to be in ketosis. And if we can't be in ketosis, we're not doing the ketogenic diet. So people start counting carbs, they start looking at sugars, they start focusing on the glycemic index. But what's missing in this whole thing is the understanding that protein also increases insulin, especially if you have insulin resistance or you're a diabetic or you're pre-diabetic. I mean, there's so many times where a diabetic will uh, go on low carb, okay? And then they'll have this huge steak as their dinner and they wake up in the morning and the sugar's just like off the chart. How can that be? I ate low carb. It's the protein. So protein has the ability to increase insulin, uh, not as much as carbs, but it will increase insulin. All right, so now that you know that, there's only two foods that do not trigger insulin, okay? Fat and fiber. But also when you combine these two with other foods, you buffer the insulin, okay? You reduce the insulin. And I'm going to explain that in a second because no one just really eats, you know, just protein or just fat or just carbohydrates. It's always a combination of things. So I'm going to give you a, a really good principle to think with on this topic from my book, The Healthy Keto Plan on page 154, that is called the insulin index, okay? The insulin index. That is the scale of foods that trigger insulin. And that goes beyond the glycemic index, which is all about just how much a carbohydrate will spike your blood sugar. This is talking about uh, the non-carbohydrate things, okay? Not just sugar, not just other carbs, but even proteins and variations of fats in protein that could trigger insulin. Because this is the most important thing we need to focus on when we're trying to achieve health, okay? And of course, you know, you already know that sugar will trigger insulin and various carbs will increase insulin. And you probably also know that it's important to have normal blood sugar, right? I mean, you don't want it too low. You don't want it too high. And the more you go on low carb, the lower it will go. So before that number would have been classified as hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, but now it's your new normal because you're not consuming carbs. You're running off of fat. So they consider like a hypoglycemia being like below 70, right? I mean, when you do keto or intermittent fasting, 70 would be completely normal, okay? Even sometimes 65 or even 60 or even lower will be normal. You'll feel good. And so don't think you have hypoglycemia as a, as a bad thing if your blood sugars are that low, because if you're then misdiagnosed and you're, they tell you just, oh, eat some sugar, now you actually start the whole cycle again where you're gonna create more problems. But it is important to have perfect blood sugars, okay? So anywhere between like 70 and 80, okay? That would be ideal. Because if that sugar is too high, as well as having the insulin too high, these are the symptoms. Tired, you get fat, your cognitive function gets less, your mood becomes a lot lower, you start developing metabolic syndrome and you get hungry all the time. And then if it's low, you get irritable, you can't sleep, shaky, craving, hungry. When your blood sugars are, are perfect, boy, you're going to feel your optimum. Okay, so that is one goal. In addition to all the other benefits we're trying to achieve by going on keto or intermittent fasting. Now, this insulin index is very fascinating because the lower the number, the better, okay? The less insulin that's triggered. So like butter would be two. Now, butter has a tiny bit of other things in it that probably brings it up to two or else it'll probably be zero. But butter is two, so that's, that's low. It's not gonna create much of any type of spike with your insulin. Pecans are five. Why? Because it has a good amount of fat. It's a fatty nut. Walnuts are nine. Why are walnuts higher? Because 
they're not as fatty as a pecan. Now let's take a look at egg yolk, it's a 15. Look at egg white, it's 55, okay, why? Because egg white doesn't have any protein in it. If we combine an egg white with egg yolk, we'll get a whole egg, which comes out to right in the middle, 21. So again, I want you to think with the concept of normal fat that comes with the protein is going to be better for your insulin uh, stabilization. So anything low fat or lean or skim is not going to help you because we want this insulin low. The more lean a protein is, the more low fat, the higher the insulin, the less your ability to get into ketosis. Now let's take some that's really high on the insulin index, whey protein powder. Why? Because it's, there's no fat in it. It's super high. And um, a lot of people take it as a supplement with maltodextrin because they're trying to build muscles because their whole idea is to actually increase insulin. Okay, that's what they want to do to stimulate muscle growth because insulin is an anabolic hormone, okay? But my question is, when you do this, you're combining something that's very high on the insulin scale and something else that's very high on the insulin scale as well as the glycemic index. In fact, maltodextrin is higher than glucose. It's probably the highest thing on the GI index. You're creating insulin resistance. That's the negative part of it, okay? So you're gonna end up maybe creating some muscles with a lot of insulin resistance. Now, some people genetically maybe might not create insulin resistance, but a lot of people will. If I consume this, I would feel like crap because it would start to aggravate my pre-existing insulin resistance problem. Now, let's just take, not that you would eat ice cream, low-fat ice cream versus regular ice cream. Okay, what's in low-fat ice cream? We, we have high carb, we have a low fat. There's some protein in there, okay? What's in regular ice cream? High fat and high carb and some protein in there. So what would be lower on the insulin index? Of course, the regular ice cream because it has more fat and fat buffers to some degree the insulin response. Now, of course, I'm not telling you to eat regular ice cream. I'm just showing you this so you can think with this. So if somehow you're out there and you are forced to eat ice cream, choose the regular ice cream, not the low fat ice cream. All right, check out this right here. We have whole wheat bread, okay, versus white bread. It's almost the same as far as insulin. So why is white bread higher on the insulin index? Because it has less fiber. Fiber buffers the insulin response. All right, check this out relating to fat. Tuna, like in a can, is 16 if it's in oil, but it's 26 if it's in water. Why is this one higher? Because it doesn't have the oil. The oil is supposed to buffer the insulin response, and there's no oil in there, so that is why it's higher. Let's take a look at whole milk, okay? It's 24, but look at skim milk. It's 60. You see the difference there? Why? Because there's a lot less fat in skim milk. Now let's take a look at something else. Uh, let's look at beer, it's 20. White wine is three. Now for this one, we're not talking about fiber, okay? We're not talking about fat. We're just talking about the relationship between how beer will affect your insulin levels versus white wine. So obviously now you're probably gonna run out and start drinking white wine, but here's what you need to know. There's something else in alcohol that creates the problem and that is alcohol. <laughs> So there's alcohol in both of these, and that's going to create the liver damage, and it's going to give you a set of additional problems. So it's not always just about insulin, it's about other things in these ingredients. Okay, so now I hope you have some deeper concepts that go beyond just the carb counting, but I think the best video to watch next would be the one on the glycemic index and glycemic load. That's something a little bit different, so check it out. I put it up right here.